This video is brought to you by Ten, our debut hardcover book celebrating ten issues of the local project. Use the code Book Five at checkout for a five percent discount. They always say with great work you need three things, which is a great client, a great builder, and hopefully a great architect. It's just such a joy to come back to the property and see it after it's actually had time to establish itself and sit more comfortably and then take on some character in terms of the colours and the growth of the landscape around it. To work in a place like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm Don Bennett, the Managing Director of Bennett Murata Architects. And on this project, I was a delivery director and co-project architect. My name's John Wilkin. I'm a design director at Bennett Murata Architects. I was design lead on this project and co-project architect with Dom. And we'd like to welcome you to Robinson's Run. Robinson's Run is located on Wodi Wodi country, which is just outside Kangaroo Valley in New South Wales. The site itself is about 70 acres and it is a partially cleared rural property at the base of a beautiful escarpment. The very original brief was to replace an existing three bedroom house on the property. Our clients had used the property as a, a weekender for their growing family for about 20 years. And that building, which is essentially a project home, was at an end of life and they were looking to replace it. Well, because their kids had grown up and were using it a bit less as a family, they'd started renting it out on weekends. The brief started to evolve as a weekender, both for the family, but also for weekend stays. You enter the back of the house through a deliberately controlled entry program, which again creates a slow reveal on the house. We then go through an entry portal, which is actually a gate, not a front door, into an outdoor space, which then creates the, the diagram for the house so you understand one side is living, the other side is bedrooms. As you come through the front door, you're actually looking down the bedroom wing through a long view along one of the rammed walls. It then radiates around to the outdoor space, which has the elevated bedroom above it through an open stair. Where we're sitting now is the living room, which is off to the right of the main entry. And again, it's intended as a big open space. Below us is a living room, another living room for children um, with an arcade space and a wine cellar. It's technically a games room for adults. There's also a separate structure, which our clients created initially for their own use, which is a shed structure for all their farm equipment, as well as a, a single bedroom living space. And we had the, the joy of seeing some tenants arrive into the space and see their, their experience, including our clients who had never seen people who were renting the space come into the space. And it was really amazing to see their reaction and how people walk in and do exactly the things we were looking to do, which is have those macro moments walk in, wow, it's amazing, it's an amazing sight, look at it. But then those micro moments of going, oh, look at this, look at this. And, you know, the favourite thing for me was seeing a, you know, 30-something-year-old guy come in, running his hand along the, the rammed earth wall, saying this is the sexiest wall I've ever seen in my life. And I kind of went, wow, we've really nailed it just with that moment. For me, that was, that was just beautiful. The house was dropped to the ground in a bushfire at the start of 2020, and that changed the, the way we interpreted the site and our client interpreted the site, in that the site went from being fully vegetated to very barren, very open, it completely opened the whole landscape up. So whilst the site now has regenerated in a really beautiful and interesting way and continues to grow, for us actually losing the house changed the way our client interpreted the site. They felt like then they didn't have an attachment to a location on the site an attachment to the, well, the way the building needed to be read. So it allowed our client as well as us a little bit more freedom with the design of the current house and the way the house sat and the way it moved through the site. So it was actually a blessing in disguise in a way because it, it released some of the sort of the design pressure off the brief and off our client's expectations. The other effect of the bushfires was that, as John said, it decimated everything on the property. So it was a moonscape. And as much as a tragedy as that is, 
It allowed uh, our clients to consider the site holistically. And that's when they went back and reconsidered the brief again from a modest weekender to something more like what we see today. One of the really strong decisions we made very early was to make a house that sat in the ground rather than a house that sat over the ground. We'd made that decision quite early on before the bushfire came through, but even after that, it, it felt like the house really wanted to be heavily grounded, heavily protected from the southwest, whether it's from a bushfire, from a thunderstorm, or from just a really bad weather event. So the back of the house, which faces towards the southwest, is quite solid. There's zinc used, there's concrete, there's stone. It's very well protected, including the rammed earth to the north side is much more open and, and generous to the space and the view. So we made a lot of conscious decisions about how the house sat in the property as well as how it would react to the environment around it. After the bushfires, when we came onto the site, we saw there was a lot of trees fallen. We were concerned about losing really valuable Australian hardwoods. A lot of the timbers were really valuable species like bloodwood and tallowwood. We then started to build that timber back into the fabric of the building. It was a really simple and beautiful and elegant way to build part of the story of the site back into the new build. And it's used on window linings, in door reveals, it's used throughout the building. For this site specifically, it was important to continue the story of the site for our clients. And they enthusiastically bought into the idea of reusing the timber for that reason. But on a more broad level, I guess as architects, we consider ourselves custodians of a site for a short period of time. There's buildings before this on site and there'll be buildings after it. So we consider this building to be part of the story of the site and if we can find a way to stitch some of the old into it, uh, then I think that's a valuable thing to do. So I have to say my favourite part would be this room that we're in at the moment in full open mode. As we arrive, it's the first thing we do is to open it up and just to, to experience the place exactly as per the brief. The primary driver of the design decisions we made was to make sure that people were here to experience the environment they're in. Everyone who comes to this site reacts in a way which is just magical because the place is magical and that the escarpment is beautiful, the landscape is beautiful. Whether it's hot outside, cold outside, raining, beautiful, sunny, there's very much about the experience of the, the environment they're in. So they can hear the rain, they can smell the wildflowers, they can, you know, feel the walls. So it's a beautiful space in terms of just understanding the environment that you're in. This video is brought to you by TAN, our debut hardcover book celebrating 10 issues of the local project. TAN unites the very best projects from the first 10 issues of the publication into a beautiful single volume. With over 400 pages of architecture and design from both leading and emerging creatives, the hardcover book takes readers on a curated and meditative journey. The premium paper stock of the book means 10 is an enduring addition to a coffee table or library to be enjoyed for years to come. With worldwide delivery available, have 10 delivered directly to your door. Head to the link in the video description to purchase your copy now and use the code BOOK5 at checkout for a 5% discount.